Well, my friends, I made unexpected progress yesterday. I can't believe how much I got done. I'll tell you all about that. And already this morning, we've had kind of a tragic accident, and I'll tell you about that too, right after this. <laughs> My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Thursday, March 23rd, and you can see I'm in a t-shirt. I'm in one of my viewer t-shirts. That's making me think there could be morels out there right now to be found. It's a very good possibility. It's They start showing up around this time of the year here in the Ozarks, and I have not yet looked, but it's been warm the last two days. Usually when the temperatures get up around 70, that's when they start showing up. So I'll be out there sometime today looking, and just in case there's some out there. What was the tragic accident? That's not clickbait. What have I always said is the most dangerous tool in the workshop. I say it every time, anytime people ask me about the tools, I always say the most dangerous tool in the workshop is the bandsaw, not the table saw. The table saw is so darn scary, most people are respected and get away from it. The one that's not scary at all is the bandsaw because you don't see anything going on. It, it doesn't make all that much noise. It just has a blade spinning. And people take that blade for granted. And yes, this morning my wife got her finger into the bandsaw. And apparently I didn't see it because she did it before I got down here. I actually overslept. This is the first morning I've overslept. I don't know whenever. Anyway, she did it this morning before I got down here and I already had it bandaged up, you know, and I know it's bad. She just won't go to a doctor, period. Uh, zero. She, I asked her, I said, don't you think it needs stitches? And she goes, yep, it probably does. And I said, well, then you better be going to the hospital. Let's get going. And she doesn't want to go and you can't... You, you just, you really don't know how stubborn someone can be. She is pretty stubborn. We just have to wait and see what happens on that, I guess. But it doesn't look good to me. The start of this video was we made a lot of progress yesterday, so I'll try to tell you all about that progress and show you some of it. So I guess I'll start in reverse order. Uh, the last thing I did yesterday, or well, sort of, kind of the last thing, was Cash's lesson. He showed up and we went through his songs and he's doing really well. He's, he's singing on time, he's playing on time, changing chords on time. He's got it down pretty darn good now. And the good news is he's going to be starring in a talent contest at his school this Friday evening. And I say starring because I'm sure he's going to win it. <laughs> I hope he does. That would really boost his confidence if he would win or maybe get second or something. That would be really good. I hope he does. Wishing him well. We also started learning a new song yesterday. Uh, the song is called He Took Your Place. It's a gospel song. Cash's family uh, really likes the gospel music, so that's what we're focusing on for the most part. After Cash's lesson, I guess I'll back up some more. Surprise, surprise, I got my new phone. It's a Pixel 7 Pro. Very easy setup. I can't believe how easy it was. I don't know much more about it than that other than I know the camera is really awesome in this thing. And so hopefully we'll be getting some footage and things that you can see done with this new phone very shortly. So I'm very happy with that so far. It sure beats that other thing that just kept rebooting all the time. <laughs> After she messed up her finger, well, she bandaged it up and she kept working. You know, that's just her. Uh, me, I'd probably went and cried for a while, but she uh, was working on my thickness sander. And in 35 years of working on my thickness sander, I have never had anything happen on that. Not one thing. Well, it happened this morning. The motor fell off. <laughs> I have to admit, I have kind of an anemic motor mount on there. I just have a little pipe sliding through two eyelets and the motor is on eyelets and it just hangs on that. And the tension of that hang, the belt, you know, tightens on that and it works and it's always worked. I've never had any problem with it. <laughs> Well, this morning, one of the, that pipe somehow worked its way out of the, one of the eyelets and the motor fell, you know, so wouldn't you know. So she's not having a real good day. Oh my gosh. Well, all right, let's move on to more positive things and things we got done yesterday. The fiddle is finished. Yeah, the strings came in unexpectedly. 
got her all set up and tuned up. I worked on uh, the setup on this. I didn't change a lot of things, I'll be just honest, but I changed a few things. Like I spread the strings out, I knocked the action down a bit more at the, at the nut so that it's gonna be much easier to play. I'd play it for you, but I can't play a fiddle very well to begin with, and this early in the morning with these stiff hands, not much chance. Hopefully later today, I'll when my hands get loosened up, I'll play it some and at least have a closing video for the video I made on setting this up. And hopefully you'll see that video this weekend. Okay, so that was positive. That means I get to start on the next project. So let me show you what that is. So here are the next two instruments, the final two. This is an Epiphone mandolin, F-style mandolin. And we're going to do the full meal deal on this. Going to go do everything it needs. We're going to put an antler saddle on here. Uh, there's an outside chance we might even put a new bridge on this. Uh, this bridge is pretty much junk, I'll be honest with you. It's not a very good bridge at all. I can just tell by looking, in case you're wondering how I know. <laughs> I've seen these kinds of bridges before. We're going to scallop the end of the fingerboard down, get rid of the frets, and give you more pick clearance. Because if you can look at this right now, you have no pick clearance there at all. So your pick hits the end of that. And while that looks pretty up there, we're going to get rid of all that clutter up there too. You know, I've said before, this is not what you want to do to, to your peg head area. You really don't want to make these decorations. And the reason is they just vibrate and make all kinds of weird noises. So, you know, I know a lot of people do this, but if I were you, I would avoid doing that and just cut them off short when you restring it. So anyway, this one's basically just a full meal deal setup, so it shouldn't take too long. One afternoon, I think, would probably get that one done. And, and as far as I know, I think this one's also a setup. What is it? It is a banjo, five string banjo. And this one is a Dean banjo. As you can see there, it looks like a nice banjo. It's got a lot of weight to it, so uh, a lot of hooks on it. So it's a, it's a well-made banjo, actually. It seems like I've seen Dean before. I don't know anything about him, but I can tell just by the weight and the de you know, it's just a pretty darn well-made banjo. Pretty much everything about it looks pretty good to me. I, I think it's a nice banjo. So that's the last two instruments before my hiatus, except back up the truck. It's not. Yeah, I lied. Well, it would have been. I didn't really intend to lie. I don't even know how to say this. I have a previous customer who shall remain nameless. I don't believe he watches the videos at all, but he's very forceful. It's about all, the only way I can explain it. And he doesn't take no for an answer. Uh, and I mean that sincerely. And I don't really know how to explain it other than that. Anyway, uh, he said I told him to bring it on. Well, I don't remember telling anyone that, but that's what he said. And he brought it and he wants it fixed right away. It's an emergency type thing. So it's a guitar and it needs a setup also, but I don't think it's anything real serious. It's mostly just strings and action. And I think that's all it is. So I told him, fine, I'll do it. So I've got that to do too. Then I'm taking my hiatus. People keep asking me, I thought you were gonna take a hiatus. Well, I've always said, I, after I get these instruments done, and you know, it just takes longer because I'm the only person doing all this now and there's a lot to do. But anyway, I'm looking forward to getting these two done and uh, then I'll throw that third one into the mix and get it out of here too. Then officially I'm on hiatus. And I already do have two more instruments on the shelf for after the hiatus, but I told those people very clearly that it, they're gonna set, and they're gonna set for months because I've got a lot to do between now and then. And then I've already got, I think, 16 people on the waiting list for after that. And those are two of them, by the way. Those are two of the people on the waiting list, but then I think a total of 16. Moving on, what else did I get done? Well, I made real good progress on the plans also. And here's like, this is just like the instruction sheet, or it's really not instructions. I don't really include instructions with how to build this thickness sander. I'm not telling you how to build it. I'm giving you very detailed drawings and I'm giving you important notes about each part. And that's all there is to it. If you're looking for 
do this first, then do that, then do this. You're not getting that with these plans. You're getting very detailed drawings and you're getting the important notes that I'm making here about each part. So there's three pages of notes and parts. And then I wanted to show you the drawings are like this. There's one with all the detail on it and then there's one without any detail. And that's the way each thing is. Now I'm gonna add one more drawing here. I'm gonna add a detailed drawing about the spindle shaft here, the sandpaper shaft. I, I thought of that last night, and so I will do that. But here's just like, this is the uh, left, left side view, just to give you an example. And then again, without, without any numbers or you know measurements on there. And then here's the right end view. That's basically just a view of the pulley. Not that you really need that one, but I've showed it anyway. I only showed one view of that because it was so simple. And then here's a uh, top view and it shows the circle bolt pattern there in the middle and got measurements and numbers and things. And then there's one clean one here too. And the reason I put the clean one is because there's so many dimension lines and things that it could confuse someone. So they're, they're wondering, is that part of the drawing? And it's not. So, you know, that's why you have a clean one in case you're wondering. And again, on the, this is a bottom up view. So you're looking at the bottom of the ba base and looking, you know, from the bottom of the base up through the machine kind of is the way that view is. So anyway, I've got a lot of drawings here that will be included. Uh, more than I think enough. I know I could build it from this, of course, but I know how to build it. <laughs> I have drawn this in such detail, and especially after I get that last drawing in there of the spindle shaft, that I think anybody that can fabricate anything, I'm pretty sure will be able to build this. Obviously, it would be much more helpful if you had a milling machine and a lathe, but if you don't, I still think you could get it done, kind of like Victor took it on his own and made his own out of just basically parts off the shelf. And I think you can make one like that uh, with this, and uh, especially with the directions and information that I have in here about each part. So for today, my work is cut out for me again. I got to get in there and get caught up on uh, office stuff. And uh, I didn't even work in the office yesterday because I ended up with doing all these other things. I just made sure there weren't any orders waiting on me and there weren't. But I'm sure I've got orders in there today. I th I'm almost positive I do. I think I saw one come through. And so I've got to get that out and get the paperwork caught back up in there and hopefully return the phone calls, etc. And then I'll see how far I get on these new instrument projects here. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you would, please give me a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. Tell your friends, try to get me some more subscribers. We're just about to crack the 90,000 subscriber mark, which is pretty good for a fat old man. Oh, speaking of fat. I've lost 11, maybe 12 pounds since the first of the year. I'm trying to thin down. I'm going to try to get down to 190. I'm presently at about 211. So I've got another 20 pounds to go. That's going to be a lot harder than this first 10 or 12. I know that for sure, but I'm trying. Wish me luck. We'll see you tomorrow.